long as we got grip, we're just gonna keep on a moving that way. Mr. Sludge and Pepe, the 350, the DR350, the 1990? 95-ish? 90. 95-ish. And he is a, he's just a down low bargain, mug bargain machine. I actually got some, uh, a little bit of uh, mud in my mouth from your little kickback. That was awesome. <laughs> Woo oh, don't get those, that log about scared me. I about had one wheel on the left side and one wheel on the right side. <laughs> Get All in right. the groove. You had a question for me. Well, I've got several for you. All right, let on me. Um, first one, well, I guess we were having a conversation via messaging on Google Hangouts about today's heroin. And I said, you know, it seems like that's all we've got these days are heroines. Every single movie, every single book, everything that related to teenagers these days is all about the female and I said it's kind of sad that that's gone that way it seems like there's nothing for the male role model these days you know in their teens and uh, woo, woo, woo. coming down shipping down going up that's the rock Pepe down. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. That was like synchronized. Uh, made it to the we top. Synchronized That's right. kill switch. Since <laughs> we're on the video, you go. Whew. Not telling right. the truth. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> okay. Uh. I'm not going to be able to start on this deal, right. I don't think. I think I'm going to be digging and digging and digging. Yeah, it's split. Whew. All right. So we will resume that conversation later. <laughs> Woo! Okay, so after that brief intermission, for you it should have been just seconds. For us, this is about 10, 15 minutes. It's magic of video. <laughs> all right, so what do you think about all these heroines? For instance, we've got Hunger Games. Yeah. Um, you've got. All the Marvel characters, Black Widow. Yeah, Black Widow, and well, she's uh, hanging what's... out with the boys, so she's not quite as uh, more as what I was thinking of. I'm thinking of ones who seems like they couldn't do it if, it, if she wasn't there. Oh, okay. Which is um, like that one, uh, uh, Divergent. That's another series. Yeah, I've never seen that. There's, um, well, it's, it, these are all books that they've made into movies. Right. But the authors, I mean, I think Percy Jackson and Harry Potter were the last male heroes. Everything else has been a heroine. Well, but that I've see, seen. I would even say to argue in the Harry Potter series, Hermione. Yeah, she's she's a big deal. Probably. <laughs> at least <laughs> significantly responsible for the outcome of that book. Oh yeah, definitely. So, you know, I'll tell you, I'm going to... I think hey. your, the comment that you made on the messaging that really I was like, oh, I want to hear, I mean, I agree and I want to hear more, was the, you know, going back to the, we don't need to go back to the 50s where... Right. Well, I was just going to say, you know, one of the quotes that I read that kind of pertains to this, and uh, uh, I'll, I'll forgive somebody, somebody on the YouTubes can look it up, but I'm going to say it was Justice O'Connor, Sandra Day O'Connor, was asked, how many women do you think there should be serving on the Supreme Court? Yeah. And she said... I think a full panel. A full panel. Because we've always had a full panel of men. Yeah. Why not a full panel of women? Yeah. You know, and so, you know, the way I see that is we truly have, you know, repressed women so long that we kind of forget how far behind they are. Yeah. You know, because you say that, oh, 12 Supreme Court justices, that's crazy talk. Yeah. yeah. Well, we've had 12 men until the 80s. Right. So, you know... I think anything that makes it, I, I'm kind of in that, uh, for, for those of the, out there, I am a pastor, I think it falls under the, anything that's not against us is for us. Yeah. 
I would much rather have women who are empowered and strong um, so that they can also be leaders uh, out in the world. Uh, I, I think the more we can do for that is is important. Um, you know, I mean, it's one of those, kind of like back to the justice thing. We've, the guys have, have ruled the roost for so long yeah. that we kind of, you know, <laughs> as soon as there's, you know, uh, 11 roosters and one hen, we get all... <laughs> get all uppity about it and <laughs> suddenly we were all you know this this uh this uh this hen house is not producing many eggs yeah exactly <laughs> so exactly i personally like the, the the female heroines because it's just something i never grew up with and so for me to see those things being portrayed yeah on screen especially and in stories is cool uh and so you know and i, and I just think uh you know for a it's, I think it's just our society that we all need to be stronger us's than what, yeah. than what the rest of the world says sure. we are. And we go a lot further for that. All right. We're going up? We're going up. All right. Upward and onward. Now there's my view. Well, the thing that, the thing that I, I, I can, it's like the pendulum swing, you know? Yeah. I worry that we've gone so far this way that we're leaving out as I pull a thorn out of my knuckle. Um, that we're leaving out, we're almost making it, go ahead, making it, I worry that we're making it look like if you're staying home with kids and raising kids, that you're, uh, that you're insignificant. Oh, oh yeah. You know, that's what I, that's my beef with it, I guess. You know, I, I like, I, I mean, I coach volleyball, I'm around women and girls all the time, and they are wonderful creatures, you know, but there are certain things that I worry that Hollywood is doing, and, uh, audio books or books in general you know are, are doing that are making things seem untrue for instance the fact that uh you know just physically the girls can't hang with the guy honestly right you know I mean, and and they're they're portraying them as not having those physical abilities or you know disadvantages i guess and and for me you know, women, granted, women can do everything a guy can do, but we will never be able to have kids. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, and that is their, that is their one thing, that they're, we will never be able to do that. And granted, a woman can do a prick, almost everything else that we can do. Well, and then, see, I think that drives back to the heart of, a, you know, the, the quality message is not that, is not that we are equal. Yeah. But that we are all of equal value. Right. You know? And that's a that's a much different message than saying, yeah, you know, women can bench press the same as men or you know, biologically we can put babies in a test tube and do things that way. Alright. I'm gonna have to catch up with you. I washed out my front end. I just can't lug as bad as Pepe can. <laughs> Yeah, that, the four-stroke on stuff like that is nice. Well, I'm, when I'm behind you, it's almost like I've got to get the speed up, or I'm not going to make it. that gets me in trouble is when my I hit the gas and that power band kicks in and I kicks it out yeah. sail to the left or the right Oh, a little 
breeze that feels good. Yeah, yeah, the breeze always feels so nice. Log in the road. Yeah, so anyway, you know, as far as the that equal value thing, you know, I think one of our biggest problems in our society today is our overall individuality yeah. in thinking that I can do everything myself, you know, because, you know, I'll tell you right off the bat, I do not want to do my wife's job. She works way harder than I do. That's, I and agree I, with you completely. I will say that a thousand times over, so, uh, but, you know, even beyond the family, I think our communities have suffered as far as this, you know, it's kind of this general American dream, the flaw of the American dream. I have my own house, yeah, my own yard, my own 2.3 kids. Well, that also means that I need my own lawnmower. Uh -huh. And uh, I need two cars so that my kids can get to soccer and I can get to work. And suddenly we realize that that's not a sustainable proposition, you know, when you get home and you try to make a meal and everybody's tired. Uh-huh. You know, there's a lot to be said about the uh, community of, of, of yesteryear and, and, I mean, you know, hundreds of years ago where grandma and grandpa and brothers and sisters all kind of lived on the stead. Yeah. And uh, so I, I think we're, we're hurting in those, in those ways that, you know, my kids don't grow up with their grandparents. Yeah, I agree. And that when I was in Brazil, like I said, we were, there was... It was kind of a community effort, you know? Yeah, exactly. You know, grandma and Grandpa just lived, if they weren't in the same house, they just lived around the corner. Or they're on the same property in a different house. And, uh, that's just, uh, it's, it's sad that, I mean, my kids, luckily, are, they see my mom, my wife's parents a lot, weekly, if not, right. if not daily, sometimes. And they are so awesome about letting them come over and sleep over and eat all their food and yeah you know it's just well and, but the, that's that's the real uh, benefit to you all you know is that financial relief of not having to buy quite as many granola bars exactly. you know you, you have shared that expense and I can't you know when I do little grocery runs I walk out of there with sixty dollars in one bag oh yeah and I'm like you know that's a that's a big burden so well, and the other thing that's nice is, you know, when they sleep over, it gives mom and dad a, a break and a, yeah. know, a, a relief. And just, oh, man, I forgot, you know, we, I know we love each other, but are we still in love, you know? And that's one thing that's just awesome, is uh, you have that, that extra time to reconnect. Time to reconnect, exactly. yeah.